What's going on everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the FCS Dynasty here on NCAA Football 06, the greatest NCAA game of all time. Yes, I said it, man, and we got some great games on tap here, man. Eight high quality matchups for you guys here today as we're getting close to that postseason, man, as we check in first game. We're not going to even waste any time. We got the game of the week on tap here. Number 17, North Dakota State, and number 15, Montana, going up against each other. And whoever wins this game, they are going to not necessarily quench the Pac-10 Conference, but they do have the opportunity to really put themselves in the driver's seat. They're both tied for first place right now. So very high marquee matchup. And there's going to be some great action in this episode, man. So you're not going to want to miss a single moment. Stick around, watch the whole video, and it helps a brother out. And you can also help me out by smashing that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new. As we jump right into it, still haven't really seen anybody score as of right now. A very defensive matchup, which is kind of surprising. North Dakota State coming in. One of the best offenses in the, con in the country. And... Montana can score some points too. They are a very talented football team as North Dakota State They're actually gonna go for it. Brian Alexander trying to throw it It was fourth down, you know trying to come out there attempt to make a play But Jared Sullivan is gonna get his second interception of the season and it was a promising drive for the Bison of uh, they tried to go for it and listen, it was a bold strategy it didn't work out for Cotton. It simply did not work out that way. Matter of fact, Brian Alexander really having a very difficult day so far. Only one for seven to start this game. And he also throws two interceptions, although Michael Sapp could have done a little bit better of a job actually coming down with that pass. But still, with that being said, still haven't seen anyone score as of yet. But we might see something shake here as Chandler McIntyre just throws a perfect ball double coverage he even has the safety help over the top and just dropped it right in there and now montana with a chance to get the first points on the board but never a guarantee with this team though they're actually in the bottom 10 in red zone scoring as mcintyre is going to look towards the middle of the end zone and we have ourselves the very first score of this episode montana Gonna go ahead and strike first here in the third quarter. But they're going to miss the extra point though. So they only get six points instead of seven. That, you know, is still a really close game. I, I don't want to foreshadow anything. But, I mean, I'm just saying if North Dakota State decides to score, if they ever decide to score, uh, that could come into play. As we're getting to the last couple of minutes of this game, Montana... Actually, we have a chance to close things out as Chandler McIntyre is going to try to toss it downfield, but he gets intercepted. So a chance to, to close the game out and have sole possession of first place in the Pac-10 Conference. And you turn the football over. You give North Dakota State a chance to possibly win this game. One minute left to play as Alexander, he's going to launch one downfield and that goes for a significant gain. Now inside the 30-yard line, here come the Bison. Oliver, three catches for 53 yards. We'll see if they go to him again as Alexander looks towards the end zone. And it's a touchdown for the Bison. And after making the extra point as well to go with it, North Dakota State all of a sudden with the lead. 28 seconds left to play, though. Montana does have all three timeouts, but Taylor McIntyre, he's going for it. Oh, and he's going to get it. He's actually going to get it. Oh, my. Montana retaking the lead with 20 seconds. We didn't see any scoring until basically the final quarter. And then it's going 0 to 100 real quick, as Drake once said. And they'll actually go for the two-point conversion. They are successful with it. And Montana pulling off. Technically a little bit of an upset. They beat North Dakota State. Probably the most talented team on paper. Winning by a final score of 14-7. to 7. 
So that is going to be a really big boost for the Montana Grizzlies and their resume as we get a little bit closer into postseason action as well. And remember the Pac-10, back then they did not have a conference championship game. So for Road to be a conference champion, a little bit easier than some of the other conferences that are uh, scattered around the league. And despite Montana only getting a whopping four first downs they had four first downs the entire game they find a way to win so even though it's a little bit of a defensive matchup we do go ahead and you know see if we see a you know a different tone here uh, throughout the rest of this episode as we check out on some other conferences that have some really close races going down we got arkansas pine bluff taking on the southern jaguars both teams in the hunt in their respective divisions within the big 12 conference as we're going to take a look in on kevin o'neill and you want to talk about a certified bad man he is certainly a bad man thousand yards 10 touchdowns he is that guy and we'll see if they go to him early we'll get to try to target him but arkansas pine bluff is going to get a huge turnover to start this game aaron jackson that might have been his third interception, same as the number on his jersey. And the Golden Lions, that is a heck of a team name, by the way. I'm in love with that team name, to be honest with y'all. Going to get his uh, third interception of the year, and his team is set up in great field position, except his offense, literally, very next play, I kid you not, they turn the football right back over. That's Madsen, 24 for Southern. That turns the ball over. So each team now with one turnover apiece. As we go ahead and see if the, we see less, a little bit less turning the ball over and maybe a little bit more scoring. You know, we're we're more down with the scoring uh, here on the channel. As we go ahead. Oh, nice little pitch move. Suddenly, Silver's got a little bit of space on the outside. One man with the beat. He can't quite beat that final defender but vince parks doing a great job you know taking the pitch and that's not an easy play to run you know wide receiver being cognizant of pitching that football most of the time those wide receivers man they like to try to keep it but very selfless and it's gonna set up a southern touchdown by the fullback a little bit of fullback you action here which helps the jaguars take the lead first here as we get halfway through the first quarter of play, a 7-0 lead for a team looking for their first division title in this FCS series here in year number one. As Arkansas Pine Bluff trying to respond, but another interception though. Try to throw that thing into double coverage and not only that, but Jacob Tillman won the offensive line for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Does end up getting a little bit shaken up. Hopefully he's okay, but... You truly never know what can happen. You know, seems like an NCAA 06 that not only do we see injuries happen a little bit more often within in-game, but we also see more uh, dangerous injuries, uh, more uh, long-term injuries in this game. You know, makes it a little bit harder to win a national championship. Um, so that's uh, something to, you know, keep an eye on. Is that is a nice little step-back cheese move there. Is that going to lead to yet another southern touchdown and and the bayou is rocking here as it's a 21 nothing lead here we're not even out of the first half by the way that's the crazy part and it might get a little bit worse as arkansas pine bluff the golden lions gotta go ahead and punt this football away get it to the special teams and special teams is going to get itself involved as well. He is going to be strutting down the sideline. And it's going to be a touchdown for the Jaguars again. The Bayou already rocking. And it's a 28-0 lead. But look at this. How about that quarterback? Ooh, that we got to go ahead and check that replay real quick. Because Jarrell Patterson just faking out some defenders. I mean, look at this. Fakes the pitch and gets a defender away from him breaks a second tackle by the way in open field and with less than 30 seconds left they're gonna go ahead go into their no huddle gonna get the pitch out and no one out to really account for that pitch man so the golden lions 
will get that goose egg off the scoreboard. And it's going to be 28 to 7. As the Golden Lions trying to work themselves back into this game a little bit. 18 point difference. As we go ahead, jump into the second half now. Southern looking for a second. Special teams touchdown. Spin move. He's got the spin cycle. And now he's all alone. Strutting and dancing his way down to the edge of the end zone. Touchdown, Jaguars. And it's a 35 to 10 lead now. And they are looking special teams, man. Special teams being the ultimate difference maker. I mean, offense for Southern was playing extremely well, but it's really hard to lose really any sort of game. If you're out here with three, count it, three special teams touchdowns in Southern indeed winning big. 49 to 10 and improving to 7 and 3 as well. A good year. So we go ahead and jump into some rivalry game action here. We got Eastern Kentucky. Taking on an in-state opponent here, the Murray State Racers. And listen, usually I don't show teams if both teams are under 500, right? I typically don't do that, but look at the standings. These teams right here, Murray State and Eastern Kentucky, whoever wins this game, they're just going to be one game out of the Big Ten race. They're still, they're both still in this race. That's the crazy part. Eastern Kentucky especially. There, there's like no chance that Eastern Kentucky gets over 500 and yet here they are a chance to win the conference despite that. I mean, it's a little bit of a long shot, but should be an exciting matchup. Two teams that have pretty solid offenses, you know, average to above average offenses and terrible defenses. So we should see a lot of points, but that doesn't mean the defensive guys can't come out here and make a play every once in a little while. As we see the defense get the first highlight in this ball game. Actually, how about the first couple of highlights? Matter of fact, as you know, Wilson just getting absolutely lit up like a Christmas tree there. And now second and long, Wilson got a little bit more time in the pocket and just drops this thing right in the bucket. And that is going to be a 32-yard pass down the sideline. Going to get him into the red zone where Murray State has been really effective. They've been a top 10 team in terms of their red zone scoring. Either getting touchdowns or field goals every single time. And that is going to continue as well as Murray State draws first blood in this rivalry game matchup in the Big Ten. 7-0 lead in favor of the Racers. We'll see what the Colonels of Eastern Kentucky can do as they call a toss play to the outside in this running back he is a certified bad man and that man's gonna be gone like a girl in a country song touchdown eastern kentucky and it's now all knotted up at seven apiece here Ooh, we might have a little bit of a track meet now as murray state cannot score in their next possession so eastern kentucky with a chance to take the lead and mama there goes that man as that's gonna be another long touchdown for the colonels as we are looking at technically a little bit of an upset alert here 14 to 7 lead in favor of eastern kentucky they certainly did come out here and they was ready to come out and play that is for sure but oh do we just see a nasty spin move is, is that gonna be a touchdown oh that's a touchdown that's so nasty Oh, you didn't have to have to do them like that. But Jared Allen did. 95-yard touchdown. And the kick return coverage was solid. It wasn't even that bad. Just an even more incredible play. And we are just seeing some incredible plays by both teams here in this first quarter. That's right. We are still in the first quarter. And we still we have 35 points scored in this game already. There's been there's some games in college football, especially SEC in real life. Yes, I'm talking to y'all. Be mad at me, but uh, we don't we don't always see like the two teams reaching 35 points. You know, and the fact that it happened in the first quarter, you know, that's absolutely insane. But I'm saying this now because Eastern Kentucky, this is where they might start to fall apart a little bit. I mean, we saw you know, the good that Eastern Kentucky can do, you know, why they've been so competitive within Big Ten Conference action, but 
Also, simultaneously, why they are three and six. I mean, you're you are what your record says. There's no excuses about that. Is East Kentucky to turn the football over, giving Murray State an extra possession, which listen, usually not a great idea whatsoever. As we got a goal line set here on second and goal, and we get our second fullback touchdown of this episode. This time happening in this Eastern Kentucky and Murray State ball game here. And sure, not the expert is going to be proud of the fullback U action unfolding down here at the FCS level. Ryan Perkins, man, also, you know, he's doing his thing, though. He is doing what he can. To really try to go ahead and keep his team in the game. But this quarterback's got to get some time a little bit. You know, you got to be able to run the football and pass the football as well. And Cam Jones not having it yet. As he is over 2,000 yards. He did uh, just reach that milestone. But Perkins, they hand it off to Perkins. And he fumbles the bag. In the red zone too, those types of turnovers, they are certainly going to hurt your football team. If you're you're trying to come out here and win a football game, especially a team like Murray State, who is certainly capable, although not the most talented on defense, obviously. I mean, they're barely in the top 100, and I don't think there's even 120 teams in this Dynasty universe specifically. So this is not a good defense that Murray State has. But offensively, though, I mean, they could score at will it seems like at times and we're seeing that right now they're moving the ball down the field extremely well they already have it outside the red zone as they are two for two in red zone opportunities so far today both of which ending in touchdowns as they go to the tailback he's getting some nice blocks on the outside and he's gonna find his way into the end zone touchdown murray states and it's still first half action here as Murray State, they are going to pull ahead 14 unanswered points to end the half. And that's a huge blow for Eastern Kentucky because not only do they go into the locker room without that big MO, but they also have to give the football back to Murray State here to start the second half. And this is going to be special teams touchdown number two as mama, there goes that man. Huge touchdown, 93 yards there, my guys. This is a 35 to 21 ball game. And now Eastern Kentucky's offense, they got to go to work. Jones trying to get it out, but facing some intense pressure. And Kelly Nelson going to make him pay for it. The safety with his first interception of the day. And again, like this is not something you want to do with Murray State. Giving you know, a great offense. Oh, I just jinxed him. I just deadass jinx, jinx this team. Talking about how great this offense is. And then they turn it over on Eastern Kentucky side of the field. So that does end up meaning Eastern Kentucky. Their defense will stand for now. But they can't capitalize off it. And it's still a two possession game. Oh! I thought that was going to be a free possession game. Is Mike Nicholson. Look how many guys are around in the picture. There are four defenders in that picture and still finding a way to come down with it i mean i don't know what else you could do to be honest with you uh sometimes you, you just can't stop the perfect throw uh there's no uh defense that could stop that kind of throw that we saw and it leads to a touchdown and now yo murray state remember this team was down 21 to 14 ever since that first quarter we got now 28 unanswered points so now down by three possessions, trying to get back into this football game as they are going to have to launch it deep. Going to be expecting some more long balls here probably for the rest of this game. You know, not a lot of time to try to make up this difference. These quarters, they can go quick if you're trying to run out the clock. I'm just saying, it is possible. As Jones looks to his right, he's going to go ahead. But his receiver fumbles the football, and that is the last thing that they needed right now. Another turnover, this time being in the red zone. Now, Murray State is backed up inside the 10-yard line, but they're going to quickly get out of that really danger zone area. You know, for those that watch the new Top Gun, y'all know what I'm talking about, the danger zone. Uh, but we got a third and long from the 24-yard line. We'll see if they can keep the drive alive as Wilson. He's going to scramble out to his right. 
throws across his body and the tight end bailing him out there huge play downfield i mean this is not a safe throw to make i mean that defensive back was in a good position to make a play he just you know failed to do just that make a play and it might cost another score and sure enough it does as mike nicholson able to get another strike from john wilson and now it's really starting to turn into a little bit of a route now it is 49 to 21 right now absolutely huge deficit to overcome but eastern kentucky got to show them a little bit of love and credit they are not going to give up very easily there as Cam Jones, he's just following his blocks, man. Now, he's not the most athletic quarterback. He does end up getting caught from behind. But it sets up a good gain as they go back to the running game. Ryan Perkins gets loose, and he's going to have himself yet another touchdown. That is touchdown number three on the day for Ryan Perkins. And, you know, that was a tight box, but, I mean, too little, too late, unfortunately. As Murray State, they will be getting themselves back to 500. They're now... Five and five on the year as well. Eastern Kentucky, you know, just having a tough year. Three and seven. Uh, th what they did in non conference definitely not helping them whatsoever. And that is likely going to eliminate Eastern Kentucky from the Big Ten uh, conference championship picture. Murray State, though, they will stay alive. Uh, they will remain just one game behind Tennessee State, where as of this moment in the episode, I mean, there's going to be some simming in between these games. Uh, Y'all don't see that most of the time till the end. Um, Tennessee State will still remain on top. But with that being said, we do also have, like I said, a healthy dose of top 25 matchups. We got number 13, Tulane Green Wave, who their quarterback, Jack Irvin, we did see on the preseason mag magazine uh, back in episode number one. Uh, which if y'all haven't watched episode one and you're you're brand new i recommend checking that out uh that should be a, in a playlist in a card at the end of the episode if that you know something that interests you uh but they're out here on the road they're taking on the 20th ranked rice owls and rice is trying to come out here they're trying to get themselves back on track a little bit this was a team that got embarrassed on the road against smu and so they cannot afford any more losses if they want to go ahead and remain in the top 25. So we need to take care of business against Tulane to make sure that that doesn't happen as not the start that they're necessarily looking for. 513 left to play here in this second quarter. And Tulane will jump out to a 7-0 lead. Gonna have to come down to really this wishbone offense. Rice, what they like to do, take care of the football. They want to win that type of possession. And wear you down throughout the course of the game and eventually see plays like that where you're getting that long that long ball that home run kind of run you know what i'm saying so it's able to be knotted up at seven apiece as jack irvin's going to call his troops in a line of scrimmage 120 we'll have to play in the first half irvin gonna watch it over the middle but it's intercepted this could be trouble oh spin move two spin moves he somehow gets out of it and I thought Tulane's offense was at least going to make the tackle, but that doesn't happen. Ryan Walker now tied for first place in Conference USA with four interceptions on the year. Gives Rice the lead, and that lead's going to get a little bit bigger now as we not only do we have one pick six in this matchup, we got two pick sixes for the Rice defense, and that is the lead that Rice will have. A 21 to 7 lead here as Adam Magnum is gonna go ahead and go ahead and try to boot this thing. He's got a solid little leg and he's feeling himself right now as Magnum. He's gonna get this off and look at how far this ball goes. That goes into the end zone. And listen, I don't have the NCAA 06 next mod next. Uh definitely recommend checking them out. I might, if y'all uh like ask me about it in the comment section, I'll I can definitely leave a link to their Discord. Because uh, they got like a bunch of cool stuff going on, man. Uh, so definitely recommend giving them their support. If you haven't done so already. But yeah, the punter, he gets the... It was either the team record or the NCAA record for longest punt at 67 yards. I mean, 
definitely no small feat whatsoever. But Tulane, you know, they're going to try to fight and claw their way back into this game. As Jack Irvin, he does get a little bit of time. Breaks the tackle, too, and just that's what made him so special. That what landed him on the preseason magazine. The man has an absolute cannon. There's absolutely no doubt about it. But is it too little too late? Tulane trying to rally back, but unfortunately, they don't get any more opportunities to get the football as Rice. They do recover the onside kick. They run out the rest of his clock as well. And Tulane going down to Rice. So Rice, after being upset last week by SMU, they come out here, played a lot better here at home, and they will pull the upset against the number 13 team in the nation, the Tulane Green Wave. So that might create a little bit of diversity in the top 25 rankings next week. So we now go ahead and dive into the Delaware Blue Hens, who just got themselves back into the top 25, coming in 6-3 and three on the year, 6-1 and one in conference play. Definitely coming in here with ACC Conference Championship aspirations, but they first got to make sure that they take care of business against Florida A&M, who is right on their heels. And if Florida A&M can somehow go ahead, pull the upset on the University of Delaware, they would technically have the same conference record, but because of tiebreakers, Florida A&M, they would jump into first place in that division and be in control of their own destiny so big game for both teams here as delaware they're trying to you know settle their own uh you know try to get themselves uh making sure that you know got things taken care of delaware also with things to play for as well they could actually be a team that clenches its way into the acc conference championship with a win but that's not really how you want to do it fumbling the football not necessarily it i'm not gonna lie to you but this is a little bit more like it. Oh, step back, cheese. Oh, why you got to go ahead and do them like that? Oh, show them the football, my guy. Touchdown, Delaware. And the Blue Hens striking first with a 76-yard touchdown strike. And a 7-0 lead here is now Florida A&M looking to respond on their own fruition. Still one score game is tailback oh wait a minute it's a trick play and it actually works usually when they run that type of trick play where they have the halfback pass the football out usually doesn't end very well in this game you know ncaa 06 they do a great job covering that particular trick play but not that time though and the rattlers they will actually go ahead and respond and nod things up at seven apiece and look at this, a turnover the other way as well. Here come the Rattlers, and that's Brian Burnett's first interception of the season in the heck of a time to get that first turnover of the year in a huge ACC Conference matchup. And so now for the A&M, a chance to possibly go ahead and take the lead here. And I think they're actually going to do just that. Touchdown, Rattlers! And you can hear a squirrel fart in this stadium right now. It is quiet. And the Florida A&M, they will take the lead. But it might not last too terribly long, though. As the tight end, the star tight end, going to get involved in the offense. They're going to help his team drive downfield. Two minutes left to play in the first half. Shotgun formation. It's a bad snap, but it doesn't matter, though, as he delivers a strike into the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Delaware. And we are all knotted up once again. And it remains tied through the end of the first half. Still a 14-all game here as this quarterback for the Radwurst. He can also swing that football around. They have a pretty solid offense. Is that defense, though, that might legitimately be one of the worst in the country. I'm not going to lie to you. As we're going to see this man sling it deep downfield. But it's also going to be intercepted, though. As that is the first turnover that the Delaware defense has forced all day long. So now a chance to go ahead and try to take the lead once again. And going to get that tight end involved. 
He's running away from the defense. Do they have the speed to catch up? And no, they do not. Touchdown, Blue Hens off the back of an 80-yard touchdown pass. Call it 80 for 80. And a one-score lead as they try to run that halfback pass. The same trick play that Florida A&M ran earlier that actually had a lot more success. That time, not really working out, and it's now third and long because of it. Third and 11, matter of fact. Not a place you necessarily want to be, but quarterback, ton of time in the pocket. going to find his receiver downfield, Kyle Williams, who, yeah, he only has a few catches so far, but 124 yards already. Dude is an absolute menace to society. As now, running back. Finding a huge space in open field, and that's going to be yet another touchdown. I think this offense is coming alive, and I think this stadium also going to come alive here as well. As now for the AM, they try to adjust, go into that dime package, but even in the dime package, they're getting absolutely torn up. Craig Davis just finding his spots extremely well. This time throwing it down the sideline and inside the 10 yard line is Davis. He's going to look for his star tight end again. That's going to be touchdown number two for the tight end. And it's now, it might be getting a little bit out of hand. And look, the DB, he was in a good spot. He had a chance to try to break up that pass. But the thing with tight ends, they are absolute red zone frets. And we saw it there. And now it's getting out of control right now. Delaware on the verge of putting up a 40 burger as that was just a simple crossing route you know not really a big hitting kind of play but the receiver just turns to a big hit and this defense just running out of will they are just looking absolutely demoralized as no one touches that receiver on the on the screen to the outside it leads to yet another touchdown it's 42 to 14 keep in mind for the a m they actually had the lead at one point this was a real thing that did happen i'm not the only one who saw that right but josh hutchinson trying to lead his team back does get a really big throw downfield gets it out to quad williams who gets his 85th catch of the year 85 for 85 man you love to see it and hutchinson will at least get into the end zone one more time to help Cut this lead a little bit, but gonna need nothing short of a miracle in order to come out there and somehow pull the comeback victory. But it does look like as the time starts to get dwindled up a little bit, that we are looking at potentially Delaware right before our eyes, clenching a trip to the conference championship game. For the ACC, and it looks like, you know, we know that, well, we'll have to wait and see what James Madison, New Hampshire, uh, two of those teams do. A uh, Norfolk State is out of the picture, but Delaware is going to play one of those teams, and I'm really excited, you know, for that matchup. A really intriguing matchup, but a tough day for Florida A&M. They had their chances, but they did let it slip away in that second half. As we do have... Yes, our third top 25 matchup of this episode. This time, we go on over to the MAC Conference. We got the number 14 ranked Buffalo Bulls taking on the number 11 ranked Kent State Golden Flashes. And if either team can win this game, I don't know if they'll uh, end up winning the conference. I mean, definitely a little bit of space between them and Akron. Akron undefeated in the conference, but... Two teams that are definitely in the top 15. I'm definitely excited for this game. Uh, moving in is Chris Rogers. Taking a look at him. One of the star players of this Kent State football team. But guys, I'm going to be honest with you. Not a lot of offense in this game. Only 12 points up to this point. All it takes is really one touchdown to go out and ice it. And it happens less than two minutes left in the entire game. They try to go for two. They don't get it. Um, so it's not a perfect two-score victory. But, you know, a pretty uneventful game. Uh, thought there would be a little bit more action. That didn't necessarily happen. But 
Kent State's going to win this game. You know, wanted to show this game real quick. They do end up winning by a final score of 15 to 3. So, Kent State, they will improve to 8 and 2 on the year. Whereas the Buffalo Bulls, they will be suffering their third loss here in this inaugural season of this FCS dynasty. And still, you know, in a position to, you know, get some postseason action for sure, but maybe not a marquee spot. Now, one team that could definitely be a little bit of a sleeper to, you know, get a marquee spot in postseason action, Georgia Southern. Now, they are 7-2, and two, but they are just now finally getting some love. They get into the top 25 for the very first time in this season. Tied for first place right now along with McNeese State and Texas State, who they have to be going up on the road again. So, I mean, Georgia Southern, they seem like the better football team. They certainly have more recognition than what Texas State has. But, I mean, Texas State is no slouch. I mean, they're right in that position as well. And Georgia Southern also going to have to go without Ikeda Woods. So they have the backup quarterback in the game and starting here in a very crucial matchup. That's going to, you know, help uh, set a tone for, you know, who wins the SEC West division or at least the new look SEC. Dante Kittrell, though, he was a guy that was highlighted before the start of this game he's gonna get himself a little bit active early nice job uh running the sleep to the left and Cottrell is able to do the rest getting the first score of the game up seven to nothing but Texas State they got a very prototypical quarterback man he's gonna throw it out there on the perimeter for Ryan or for Joe Davis I mean this is that was a tight window there is a very select people not only in FCS but really like on the planet that could make that kind of throw and dante walker just casually you know did it like it was just an average tuesday you know that's the insane part and now texas state with an opportunity to tie this game up they fake the the run they're gonna go play action and the tight end is gonna help the bobcats nod this thing up it is now gonna be all tied at seven apiece you'll love to see it is now georgia southern looking to respond right back backup quarterback in the game Cottrell not even going to be near as the backup quarterback he's on the run and he's going to be in the end zone touchdown eagles and the thing about this quarterback this quarterback you know while not as good of a passer as ikeda woods he is still more than capable of running this run heavy offense and we're seeing it right here two quick rushing touchdowns as georgia southern jumps out to a 24 to 7 lead but dante walker not going to give up easily as he finds his favorite target in joe davis and a huge play for joe davis his second big highlight of the day this time not going to be able to touch the ground as he does get that 62 yard touchdown doesn't end up even getting touched and texas state they did briefly had a chance to make this a one score game however a pick six by adam crump who by the way that was his first interception of the season that we just witnessed like how about that you know doing it team multiple guys you know doing like first in multiple occasions and in multiple big time games in their respective conferences and it goes for a pick six as well so georgia southern they quickly pull away 44 to 14 definitely could see georgia southern getting that 50 burger as that's almost intercepted that could have been intercepted too i mean you got two separate times that you're able to get your hands on the ball and can't bring it down that's tough but sometimes simply that ball don't lie man georgia southern Maybe it's fate, maybe it's destiny, but they do end up getting the turnover there. Ryan Pleasant forcing the fumble. So Georgia still around the big lead, so um, they put the backups in. But interesting thing here, though, Texas Southern, or Texas State, <laughs> I confused them with Texas Southern. Um, but yeah, man, uh, they actually made this more of a game than I anticipated. I mean... Give them credit for... They scored... Texas State scored 29 points in the fourth quarter. Um, 
I didn't record any of that because I figured it was going to be over. I'm trying to save some space on my on my PC, man. Cut a guy a break. But um, still, Georgia State does end up winning the football game. They win by two possessions. But pretty good fight, though, by Texas State. I am impressed by that. So with one game left to play, let's go ahead and check out the scores around the NCAA in this FCS universe as we're getting close to that end of the regular season. Some teams, you know, getting close to their final games. Starting with Morgan State. We haven't seen Morgan State in a while. They played up against Notre Dame and did not end up pretty, losing 56 to 20. Their record falls to 3 and 6. However, Western Carolina does get themselves back on track after they took a tough loss to Texas Southern, beating up on Prairie View AM 48 to nothing. The Prairie View AM football team still looking for that first win. As for Eastern Michigan, after going on an 8 0 start, they have now lost their second consecutive game. They lose to Ball State 45 to 20 to 31. So maybe Ball State gets themselves back to the top 25. As for Texas Southern, they went on the road to play against the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley State. They went 31 to nothing. They're seven and three, and they were receiving votes prior to this game. Maybe this gets them into the top 25. As for SMU, they took on Hofstra on the road up in Hampstead, New York, winning 52 to 10 in this one. SMU improving to eight and two, while Hofstra falls. The three and seven new mexico state also taking care of business with ease hosting the saint thomas tommies winning 38 to 3 saint thomas falling to one and eight eight now we do also see a massacre take place in the sec as mcneese state seeks to keep themselves alive in that sec west race they beat Furman 43 to 6 and this gets them to six and three on the year UNLV though had a serious upset scare as they went on the road to play against the South Dakota Coyotes, who have been having a pleasantly good year, 7-4, despite the loss in overtime, just couldn't get any points on the board, unfortunately, in that overtime period. One team that was not worried about being on upset of work was Eastern Carolina, and it showed on the field, winning 45-10 against Villanova, the Villanova Wildcats, falling to one in nine as for utah state though they had a tough matchup against oral roberts who gave them a pretty competitive game only winning 23 to 16 utah state does improve to eight and two while oral roberts two and eight central michigan also taking care of business in their rivalry matchup against western michigan winning for 34 to 18 north texas also was in a shootout against florida atlantic they win 56 to 42 a lot of points scored in this game north texas the mean green now 10 and 1. new hampshire fresh off its first loss of the season against temple which was a game of the week they took that frustration out on hampton winning 48 to 5 in conference action San Diego State continues to prove why they're the number one team in the nation, though. No, taking care of business against the Denver Pioneers. 36 to 13 as the Pioneers fall to 3 and 7. Idaho also doing the same thing in conference action, playing host to Southern Utah and winning 42 to 7. Southern Utah now 2 and 7 on the year. Charleston had the pleasure, though, of playing Texas AM. You know, those SEC schools. Uh, do need those cupcakes late in the year. And Texas A&M treated Charleston through to fire. 63 to nothing loss for them. Mid-Tennessee State, though, should be falling outside of the top 25, though, as they lose to UL Monroe. 33 to 28 at home. They fall to 5 and 4 because of it. So for the final game of this episode, we got Eastern Illinois taking on the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers and Western Kentucky in a similar spot that we saw Eastern Kentucky in uh, when we saw their game earlier on in the day. Western Kentucky, despite a poultry 3-6 overall record, they also started this week just being one game back. They still also somehow have a chance to win the Big Ten Conference, but they're running into Eastern Illinois, and while they don't have the highest ranking, ranked 23rd in the nation recently, getting themselves into the top 25 uh, they've been playing some really great football as of late, and Eric Vaughn, he's a huge reason for that. Over 1,200 yards receiving so far, and 
he uh he might be on that Heisman finalist list. We're gonna have to go ahead and confirm that. Uh, because I don't remember off the top of my head uh, if that's still the case. But you know, early on, you know, West Kentucky, they're known as the type of team that likes to go out, you know, run the football, win time possession, grind that clock, but they come out here. I don't know if it's just the emotion of them just happen to be the final home game of the season for Western Kentucky, but I'll tell you what, they are coming with some serious fire here as they are going to get the first touchdown of this game. It's 10 to 3 in favor of Western Kentucky. Yes, they're three and six, but they have been really competitive in Big Ten conference play all season long. How about instead of a one possession lead, maybe a two possession lead? You absolutely never know. Huge run down the left hand side as Eastern Illinois is not used to a team that can run the football like Western Kentucky can. And what that does, it softens things up in the secondary. Could set up some play action, but they're just going to straight pass it. Throw it over the middle. Aaron Pierre with his tight end. And it's going to be a touchdown for the Hilltoppers. And look at that 17-3 lead here. As Aaron Pierre, he had all the time that he needed. And then some. So the 11th touchdown of the year for Aaron Pierre in, you know, with the passing game. Maybe this is touchdown number 12. No, it's intercepted. Maybe this will get Eastern Illinois, the Panthers, back into this game. They're down by two possessions, and they badly, and I mean badly, really needed that interception. But unfortunately, they could not capitalize off of that turnover. So still 17 to 3, but Aaron Pierre, you know, still, you know, not being shy about it, even though he did turn the football over earlier in this quarter. Throws a very good ball in the back of the end zone is 24 to 3 in favor of the hilltoppers as we'll go ahead and kick this thing away here 24 to 20 24 to 3 and it's looking good for west kentucky but if there's gonna be a comeback moment for eastern illinois this might be it right here on the 20 the 15 10 5 he strutted and it's a touchdown and robinson Gets the longest kick return in NCAA history. That 100-yard kick return and that name probably will always be standing up. You know, I don't know. Uh, I mean, that's going to be really tough to beat. Uh, not that it's impossible now that I think about it. Because, I mean, like kickoffs, you could turn that from the back of the end zone if you want. But, I mean, 100 yards, though, that is insanely hard to beat. But despite that, Eastern Illinois... Still having a pretty difficult time going about trying to cut into this deficit. They're still down by free scores here. They really need a touchdown. I mean, we saw Western Kentucky score uh, in the second half to get it back up to a free score game. And if so, they're going to have to find Eric Vaughn, man. He's going to have to be that guy that maybe gets open. Instead, it's the fullback who rumbles and stumbles his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers. But 31 to 17, Eastern Illinois, they kick the football back. They do not attempt the onside kick. And a huge drive that they started with to begin this game. Their first drive was over three minutes. And so was this drive. A dagger, potentially, for Aaron Pierre in this offense. As they're able to run down the clock. And not only run down the clock, they go fourth and get a touchdown there as well. Western Kentucky might have just went ahead and put a dagger not only into Eastern Illinois but potentially any hope of winning the Big Ten Conference it might be dying in the hills of Western Kentucky but Panthers not going to give up a lot without a fight Eric Vaughn is going to get finally his first big play he's kind of been held silent that's really why Eastern Illinois has struggled um Eric Vaughn's been held silent I mean, you hate to see it, but it is what it is. But they're going to still try to get points on the board. You'll make this score look a tad bit better. They actually ran the football, which to me was was really interesting, uh, given, you know, you would think that they would be passing the football all the time. But no, they're going to run the football. It works for them. Don't get me wrong. But that being said, uh, an upset 
to end this episode, or at least the last game of this episode, last little bit of gameplay, Western Kentucky keeps themselves alive in the Big Ten Conference race, and we'll see what happens to Eastern Illinois, but it ain't looking good, Chief, I'll tell you what. As Western Kentucky notched their fourth win of the year, they improved to four and six, whereas Eastern Illinois most likely going to fall outside the top 25, and their record will also fall to 500 at 5-5. Five and five. So at the conclusion of the Eastern Illinois versus Western Kentucky matchup, we do indeed, you know, we get to week number 13 of 15 weeks of the regular season now, and look who's on the cover. Montana, their win against North Dakota State. They hand North Dakota State that first loss of the season, but it doesn't create much change in the polls despite that right now uh top not only top five but it looks like the top 10 is essentially the same uh top 11 remains the same but montana uh, they do get some more recognition they move up to number 12 in the country thanks to their uh win against north dakota state at home but hey it uh it still remains the same nonetheless so you love to see that SMU and Rice, uh, Central Michigan, bunch of teams uh, also moving up. Georgia Southern, now number 17 in the country as well, thanks to their win against Texas State on the road. That was really an absolute shootout uh, that we uh, got to enjoy. Ikeda Woods actually also hurt for the next couple of weeks. But North Dakota State doesn't really move. They only fall one spot uh, due to a uh, you know last-second loss. Uh, it, it was really like that. Yule Monroe gets into the AP Top 25. Eastern Michigan, now number 21 in the country. And then we do also see Ball State as well as UCF uh, hop back into the Top 25. But Texas Southern, man, they're getting a little bit disrespected. You know, I thought they would get into the Top 25. That did not happen. Uh, McNeese State, Te Tennessee Tech, Southern. Uh, Brown uh, from the Ivy League. They could sneak into that top 25 still. Same thing with Southeastern, Youngstown State, Illinois, Eastern Illinois is in here as well. Um, but they are not, um, you know, they were in that top 25, but that loss doesn't help them. With that being said, though, checking out the Heisman race, we have a new person sitting up on top. Kerry Williams here, the senior redshirt from New Mexico State. He is now being on the number one spot. He had a fantastic performance against St. Thomas, 33 for 41, uh, over 400 yards of total offense, five touchdowns to go with it as well. Brian Brown does end up falling down, but that's probably due to team success uh, for the most part. I mean, this is a guy that had 166 yards of total offense in that game against Ball State, but his team didn't win. Brad Hansen does move up to number three, though. Sean Reed remains at number four he ended up with 10 catches 188 yards and a touchdown against jackson state and he's really having a great season well on pace for 2,000 yards receiving that's just absolutely unheard of and then eric vaughn we saw him a little bit but for the most part he was shut down i mean he had one big catch in the end of the game but it was when the game was over uh, their offense was just out of whack only four catches for 78 yards which is a solid game but for a player of his calendar caliber we did expect a little bit more now that man that was featured on the thumbnail joe thomas the junior wide receiver from texas state his team did not win but that being said though in the five catches that he had 257 yards receiving and then also got, came in there with four total touchdowns on the day. It was not his fault that his team lost. I mean, they couldn't find a way to stop that Georgia Southern offense. God, when that 50 burgers put on you, you're not going to win nine times out of ten. That's just how it is. So you hate to see it. Richard Walker, though, his performance directly led to a victory over Tulane. The junior linebacker ends up with five tackles two interceptions and then also two touchdowns which ultimately did end up being the difference as he did end up uh his team does end up winning against Tulane by a single possession so here we are we have three weeks of regular season action and then we jump into postseason play things are only heating up we're going to continue to track uh, a lot of close races no one has really um 
They haven't officially clinched yet, but we're going to get really close to that. Should be a really exciting episode. Got various top 25 matchups throughout the FCS in week number 13, as well as go to check in on a couple of games that can directly influence some of these conference races. But it's going to be a really exciting episode. In the meantime, though, if you enjoyed today's FCS content week 12 action, do me a favor, man. Make sure you go ahead, smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel. This is John Jay Gaming on the mic signing off. I'm hoping you're all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.